In the Middle Ages, we were owned by kings and queens, earls and counts, barons and lords, tsars, dukes, duchesses, countesses, baronesses, archdukes, who had their knights and templars working as their police force for them to control the sheep of Just as it is today, nothing has really changed. Or does anyone think they just disappeared like that? They were parasiting on the people and the workers who had to give taxes and percentage of wheat, vegetables and cattle. And many times the sheeple starve to death in winter after a bad harvest. While these parasites and pharaohs were partying in the castle, drunk of the wine they had stolen, their bellies well fed, with raw food that should have been for all those hungry children. And they had their beds warmed up with young virgins of the sheeple due to the Prime noctus, droit de cuissage, droit du seigneur, or first right. Allowing these parasites to grab the newly wed bride on the very night of her wedding to come and lay with the lord and master, thus spreading the pharaonic para genetics all over. Yes, the word pharaoh etymologically derives from two demotic words, per and a meaning the big house, the big royal house of the pharaonic royal bloodline. As my dear friend William Morgan, 1776, so cleverly discovered that Genesis actually means the gene of Isis, and Geneva in the octagon base, gene of Eve, being one and the same one. Early days prior to the unity of the lower and upper kingdoms of ancient Egypt, Adishret, the Red Crown, was a representation of the kingdom of lower Egypt, while the Hajet, the White Crown, was worn by the kings of the kingdom of upper Egypt. After the unification of both kingdoms into one united Egypt, the Pshit, the combination of both the Red and White Crowns was the official crown of kings. With time new headdresses were introduced during different dynasties like Kut, Nens, Etef, Hemhen, and Kipresh. At times, it was depicted that a combination of these headdresses or crowns would be worn together. In 
Egyptian society, religion was central to everyday life. One of the roles of the pharaoh was as an intermediary between the gods and the people. The pharaoh thus deputized for the gods, his role was both as civil and religious administrator. He owned all of the land in Egypt, enacted laws, collected taxes, and defended Egypt from invaders as the commander-in-chief of the army. For, religiously, the pharaoh officiated over religious ceremonies and chose the sites of new temples. He was responsible for maintaining mate, or balance and justice, and part of this included going to war when necessary to defend the country or attacking others when it was believed that this would contribute to mate. Hinted, 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 hinted